All right, so this is my, I believe, third vlog that I'm doing along with my uh, honors broadcasting people. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about what's behind me. Oh, wrong way. There. Uh, in the movie UHF. I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson on this movie. Um, it's a movie that I loved as a kid. Um, it's Weird Al Yankovic's movie, as you can, of course, see him very prominently featured in the graphic back there. Uh, and yes, he did have a movie called, again, UHF. UHF based on the an old way that sometimes uh, television stations back prior to, you know, the widespread use of cable and stuff like that would make it to you. So there was VHF cables, if I remember correctly, and UHF. And the UHF ones were usually, at least by the time that I was even a kid, there weren't a lot of UHF stations anymore. <clears throat> and uh, big thing for, for my personal history on this, I was really close to my oldest brother when I was uh, growing up and looked up to him a lot. He's one that introduced me to this film. Um, but, you know, if you're if if you're a Weird Al fan, then this is a, a movie that uh, is right up your alley. And if you're not, this probably is not at all up your alley. So the history lesson comes, this was released in 1989, in the summer. It was thought to be, a, you know, potentially a big summer blockbuster. Reading up a little bit on it just before I made this video, it, uh, it came across that it had a very, very successful test screening. They thought this was going to be something that was going to actually save the studio that uh, was making it called Orion Studios, a uh, studio that was definitely failing at the time. Uh, and they put it out in the middle of, of summer in 1989. And <clears throat> it bombed. Absolutely bombed. Um, I think it had a budget of about $5 million and it brought in about $6 million. So it did profit, but it profited very, very modestly. I think it was less than a million dollars that it profited to put out a movie. It wasn't well received by critics, uh, but the bigger problem for it is probably that it came out in the same summer that a ton of huge movies came out. There are some summers. Summer's obviously a big blockbuster movie time period, uh, and in some cases, many of those movies are huge. Um, there's almost always, for instance, a Marvel movie that gets released somewhere around May. Um, and of course, in this case, that was going to be Black Widow. Um, there's you know a lot of other big films that usually get released around that time. This summer, it was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which was the third of the Indiana Jones trilogy, which was huge. Um, we had Batman, the first of the Michael Keaton Batman movies back in the 90s. Uh, Ghostbusters 2, which the Ghostbusters franchise is huge. As far as uh, romantic comedies, when Harry met Sally, which is probably one of the most famous uh, romantic comedies around this time. And there's even a Bond movie, License to Kill. And I didn't even mention some others that came out. Uh, so there's a lot of big movies, and this kind of got buried. It's also kind of a another thing that's kind of fun about it. It's kind of a weird movie, and the fact that it did have like three really big actors in it, or big names in it. One is, of course, uh, Weird Al himself. But then the other two, and let me see if I can get out of the way here to show. Oh, you can kind of see her through my chair there. Uh, but those are the three biggest uh, names later on. There's Weird Al. There's, of course, uh, Michael Richards there, who uh, later becomes Kramer on the 90s sitcom Seinfeld. And the one that is behind me there, that is Fran Drescher, who became the lead actress in another big 90s, uh, early 90s, if I remember correctly. Excuse me. Uh, sitcom called The Nanny. So these were, you know, people that weren't big yet, but this really was kind of near the beginning of their career, and I, it certainly didn't launch their career because it didn't launch anyone's career, but it could have had it been big. As far as, the, as far as the movie itself, it's one of those that the plot is just pretty terrible. It's a great movie because it's kind of terrible. Uh, the basic plot line is actually the part that's pretty weak. That's the weakest part about it. It follows Weird Al playing this role of George Newman, who is this guy who's a screw-up. He's had failure after failure, and his uncle wins a small UHF station in a poker game because his uncle's pretty wealthy and is, you know, having this backroom card game, and he ends up winning this small UHF television station. He's planning on selling it, but then his wife, who just absolutely adores George, played by Weird Al, uh, convinces him to keep it and let George run it because George is in need of a job. So, because he's just been fired from his previous job. Because again, failure after failure. So he takes over and he's running it. It seems like things are going okay. He's trying to make the, this is a old UHF station that plays nothing but reruns. Um, and now he's trying to bring it in and do like some more modern shows. But they ultimately are failing. 
Uh, he's putting out more money because of this, and it's not making up the money that it needs to in order to, to break even or be profitable. And he gets to the point that everything's kind of falling apart. Uh, he has a huge sort of fight with his girlfriend because he screws up on that, and she breaks up with him for a moment. They get back together. It's a happy ending. And he feels like his life is spiraling out of control, and he just walks out on filming his kids show that he films which was i think called uncle nazi's clubhouse or something like that and he just leaves this in char in the hands of the janitor stanley spadowski again played by kramer or michael richards of course and he walks out they go to a bar they are you know he and his friend while while kramer's back and our stanley spadowski's back there doing the show they're just kind of falling apart and ultimately he turns into this huge uh, success. Like, everyone loves Stanley Spadowski. He turns into this big star. And George is able to take this and basically make a new slate of TV shows based on this. Silly shows, uh, some of which are Wheel of Fish is one of them. Conan the Librarian. Uh, and Gandhi 2, which features, you know, our famous holy man and pacifist as a Rambo-style action hero. So this is the way that it goes. It turns into these parodies. That's where the show starts to pick up a little bit more. The movie, rather, starts to pick up a little more. Um, these parodies and jokes are the things that make this funny, bring it to life. You'll, If you watch it, you'll get introduced to all sorts of silly things like the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich and Spatula City. And it, it basically ended up developing a sort of a cult following. In the coming decades, it's now available. It eventually became available on DVD and then Blu-ray. And right now, it's even on Vudu free. So if you want to watch it, you actually can. And you can do it for free, although you'll have to sit through ads because it's one of those movies. Uh, it's one of those, It's a movie that's either bound to leave you just sort of laughing and repeating lines the rest of your life as I do, or you'll probably think it's completely stupid. Probably whatever you think about Weird Al's other comedy as a whole, that's where you're going to land on UHF. If you love Weird Al, you'll love UHF. If you think he's okay or you're not that into him, this probably isn't worth your time. So, But UHF, a very fun and free film that you could watch and, you know, kill an hour and a half. And then anytime someone says something about thinking about something orange, you'll think about something orange too. See you later. Hope that you're having a good time over your spring break.